Hello, good morning. Today is Wednesday, July 29th. It's the end of July and we'll be looking at Luke chapter 15. This is the special chapter in Luke. Um, the parables of the lost and the Luke exclusives that they are. The first parable that we begin with is um, the one that is common to the other synoptic gospels. But let me first, as we get into these, the parable of the lost, let me just illustrate what they are. The lost uh, sheep, the lost coin, and the prodigal son, or sometimes we could be also be son, known as the lost son. Um, these parables are brought in context, though. There is a context for Jesus sharing these parables. And the context of these parables is that he is with tax collectors and sinners. He's with these tax collectors and sinners, and the Pharisees and scribes are grumbling about his associations here. And so, to respond to the grumbling, Jesus tells three parables. And the first parable is um, a synoptic parable about the lost sheep. How many of you having a uh, hundred sheep would not leave the 99 and go and find the lost sheep and bring it back. And then when you do, there's much rejoicing in the community because uh, the sheep was found. And then the lost coin and the last and the last one, the prodigal son, are, are two that are exclusive to Luke. And then it says that if you, what woman having lost, having 10 coins loses one, uh, sweeps out the house and looks everywhere. When she finds that coin, she gathers all her neighbors and there is much rejoicing. So that's the coin. And then the next one, I guess she lights the lamp and sweeps out the house. So it makes sure they know that. Um, and, and the last of the parables is the one about the, the prodigal son, which I always, um, it's one of the best stories for me, um, especially to describe what Christianity means, uh, the incarnation of Jesus Christ and what it says about who God is. So Jesus tells the story and the story is not necessarily about the son. We call it the prodigal son and his brother or the prodigal, the parable of the prodigal son. But, the, but Jesus says in the very beginning, there was a man who had two sons. So the parable is really more about the father, the man who had two sons. And God is the father. And God acts in a way that is counterintuitive to most of us in his dealings with his two sons. And what we have in this parable is God the father acting with great grace towards both of his sons. But indeed, the one that was lost and now is found is a reason for rejoicing. That's the similarity between the prodigal son story, the coin story, and the sheep story. The parables of the lost have the continuity of um, this celebration. And the idea that comes out of even, even the parable of lost coin that says, just so I tell you, there's joy in the presence of the angels of God when, over one sinner who repents. And so uh, this relates back to um, people who have been forgiven much are devoted much. Hmm. So if we understand our blessings and our forgiveness uh, in the fullness of it, uh, we will be more grateful. And, and this, this presence of gratitude in our life is a gift to us from God. Not just the reasons to be grateful, but the gratefulness itself. A disposition in the world where you look at things from a sense of enough rather than scarcity, um, that, you, that you look around you and you're grateful for the air in your lungs, that's able to get there without the obstruction of asthma or blood clots or cancer tumors. We are grateful for the opportunity to work, the opportunity to walk on two legs. There are a lot of things that we can look around us with, with some degree of cognitive dissonance and be grateful for. 
So the understanding is that we are grateful for the grace that God has given us because we know what it's like. And I'm going to preach to get lost. And in the story of the prodigal son, you know the story. The son goes out. He says, you know what? I wish you were dead, dad, that I could have my inheritance. And dad says, you know what? I'm offended by that, but I'm not, not going to let it get me down. I'm going to give you your half of the inheritance. And he gives it to him. And the kid goes off and as kids would do, or anybody, any, any of us for that matter, squanders all the money, becomes destitute and probably hung over and sick. <laughs> he's just not doing well. So he's destitute and he's longing to feed himself from the pig troughs, which for a good Jewish kid would be a total abhorrence. So he considers that he would lend, he would go back to his father and ask to be a hired hand. So he makes up his mind that he's going to return home. And he starts walking down the path to the house. And it says right here, I mean, I'm not making this up. It says he saw him of How many of my father's hands? I will get up and go to my father and say to him, Father, I've sent him no longer. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, my translation says, while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. And he ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. That to me is the passage that tells the most about the father. Not the party that he threw and not the gracious way he dealt with the, you know, older brother who's like, you never gave me nothing. So, right, no, not even that. It's when he saw his son, no matter what his son has done, he ran to him. He didn't smile and wait for him to get to him. He didn't meet him halfway. He went the whole way and embraced him and kissed him and was celebrating that the son had returned. I mean, I would imagine most parents would sort of stand in the driveway with their hands folded and their foot tapping. It's about time. No. This father ran towards the son. And that is grace. It's a parable of grace. It's not a parable necessarily about the kingdom, not a parable about um, judgment. There's parables about all kinds of things. This is a parable of grace and it speaks grace into our lives and it tells us who our God is. Our God is an awesome God and not because of the things that God can do, which God totally can do, but of the way God loves us beyond our ability to conceive that kind of compassion. It's a tall order, but God asks us to be like that father. We usually identify ourselves with the sons, one or the other. Um, but the story is calling us to, and what, what, what John Wesley would call Christian perfection, to be like the father in the story of the prodigal son. When someone has wronged us, has offended us, has gone away from us, has squandered what we gave them, and yet we are able to embrace them wholeheartedly. Chapter 15, the Luke exclusive. I hope you will carry the parables of the lost in your heart today. And I hope you will have cause for celebration and gratitude.